everyone, Kem's Wild here with Wild Child Horsemanship. Um, in today's YouTube video, we are going to be showing you guys uh, roughly how much it costs per month uh, and per year to own a horse. First things first, I just want to give you guys a friendly reminder that we are sponsored by Jeweled and Tooled Custom Leather. So if you're ever looking for any super cool horse tack, um, definitely check them out and use the discount or discount code WILDCHILD2023 um, and you'll get 10% off your order. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to one of our longtime supporters, Bill, uh, for all of these super awesome microphones that have made these videos uh, so much better and easier uh, as far as the uh, sound and the audio goes. So before we get started, I want to add a quick disclaimer. Um, all of the prices and stuff that we discuss are specific to the state that I'm in, how we are located in Arizona. Um, depending on where you're at in the U.S. or what country you're in, um, different prices can differ, so different things. Uh, things definitely change depending on the location. So the prices in this video are specifically um, for Arizona, but it'll give you a good rough estimate for just wherever you're at um, about how expensive horses can be and what you might actually be looking at price-wise. So we've got a nice handy dandy whiteboard here. Um, and as you can see, I've got things kind of separated to a few different sections. Uh, first off, we have boarding and backyard. Uh, so boarding basically means that you keep your horse somewhere else, right? Some people want a horse, but they don't necessarily have the space or the room to keep a horse. So they go into options like boarding. Um, and so that's our first category right here. Backyard would basically mean something like we do here at Wild Child. Um, all of my personal horses, all of the sanctuary horses live on site with us. Um, and the fees definitely differ whether you're boarding your horse or you're keeping them in your backyard. Um, so we're go going to go through both of those. Uh, we also have two categories right here. We have pretty much the required stuff, like the stuff that you absolutely need. And then you have the stuff down here, which is stuff that you can pay for, you don't have to pay for, um, all that fun stuff. So we're kind of just going to go um, step by step and go through each of them. First things first, we have feed. Uh, so this can include hay, grain, supplements, um, and all of that fun stuff. Now, if you're boarding your horse somewhere, um, this could mean that they provide uh, the feed for your horse, right? So you don't have to pay for feed. Uh, that's considered full care boarding. Or you're doing self-care, which you might have to provide the feed and they do the water or something along the lines of that, right? So depending on what you're doing uh, for board, um, you may not even have to provide feed at all, but you'll typically, in the area of Arizona, um, it's $350 to $400 a month um, for full care boarding. Now, if you keep your horse in your backyard, that means you have to go and buy your own hay, right? So right now, a bale of hay in Arizona costs, on average, about 30 bucks a bale. So let's say that there's four weeks in the month, uh, you're going to be spending about $120 a month on hay. Now, let's say you have to have the horse has to have grain or supplements, we'll probably just throw like an extra 40, 50 bucks on there. Um, so we have 120 plus $50, um, that's $170. Um, a month that you will be spending specifically um, on feed, grain, and supplements for your horse. The farrier is the person who comes and does your horse's hooves. Um, typically a farrier should come out every six to eight weeks, so every two months we'll say. Um, in Arizona for a barefoot trim, um, it's about 50 bucks a trim. If you're getting shoes, it's $120 a, for one horse. It kind of just depends what kind of horse you have. Um, we're going to go as far as trimming, meaning your horse is barefoot. Um, and that's again about $50 every six to eight weeks. So split that in half, that's $25 a month um, that you have to save for the farrier. Most boarding facilities will not cover your farrier costs. Um, so whether your horse, if you're boarding your horse somewhere or you keep them in your backyard, still expect to spend 50 bucks every six to eight weeks. We're gonna put $25 um, a month for that though. The floater is somebody who comes out and takes care of your horse's teeth. Uh, this can be a vet or it can be a floater, whatever you decide to use. Um, because over time what happens is as the horses eat, um, their jaw moves sideways. And so eventually there's gonna be points in their mouth and stuff. And so the floater will come and take care of that. Typically, the floater should um, have a horse's teeth done about once a year. In Arizona, that's about $160 every time, unless the horse has to have a tooth pulled or something else. Um, however, um, it is always good to make sure that you have a floater come and check your horses every six months because sometimes if the horse is younger, um, they might have more uneven teeth, or if they're older, they might have more dental issues. Um, so we're going to put $160 for a year. Um, we'll do all the math on this at the end. This is also another expense that if you are boarding your horse somewhere, it is very unlikely they are going to pay for the floater. So whether you're boarding your horse or keeping them in your backyard, it's gonna be the exact same price. 
Vaccinations. So vaccinations are typically something that your vet does. Um, you can also go to Tractor Supply Cow Ranch um, and buy your own vaccines. That's what we typically do at Wild Child just because we know how to give vaccines. Um, and typically for one horse, you know, you might spend 50 bucks for the five-way or the four-way vaccine. Um, I'm going to put down $100 a year because uh, typically you want to get spring vaccines. Um, and usually it's a yearly thing. Every once in a while you might do twice a year. Kind of just depends what you're doing with your horse, how much you're traveling, um, and your area as well. Um, so for that, I'm just going to put $100 a year um, for vaccinations. Um, again, this is another expense that whether you're boarding, um, or keeping the horse at your house, um, the expenses will not change. The last section in the um, required category um, pertains to health. And so for health, um, this could label as vet care, chiropractic care, any of that stuff, right? At Wild Child, we actually don't have the vet out very often, uh, just because all of our members all on our team, we all have some sort of veterinary training because we live off grid. Uh, so with that being said, we typically handle most of our own vet care, but we do still see the vet and have the vet come out. Um, sometimes vet care can be super expensive. It may be a couple hundred bucks or it could be ten, twenty thousand dollars So it's always good to have a good chunk of money in savings when you uh, may be faced with a vet bill. Um, as for like the chiropractor, uh, because we do trick riding and stunt riding our main trick and stunt horses, um, they see the chiropractor every few months and that's typically about $160 to $200 um, per horse per visit. Um, but with a chiropractor, it kind of just depends on what the horse needs. Um, some horses don't necessarily need the chiropractor or a massage therapist or any of that all that much. Um, so for health, I'm just going to put $100 a month um, on here, um, again, for both boarding and backyard, just because you never know what you're going to come across. Um, but as mentioned, it's always good to have a good a good chunk of money in savings because all it takes is one emergency vet bill and all of a sudden you're bankrupt. Now we're going to move into the optional category. Uh, so this is all stuff that you may want to invest in um, when you own a horse, but stuff that isn't necessarily required. Like your horse isn't going to die if they don't get this type of stuff. The first one we have is a trainer. Uh, so at Wild Child, that's mainly what we do. We're, I'm a horse trainer um, and my whole team, they all learn how to train horses, work with horses and all that stuff, right? So for a horse trainer, uh, there's different types of training. You can either send your horse somewhere for training or you can have someone come out to you for training. Um, so let's say you hire a trainer to come out to your place. Um, my rate, I charge $50 an hour for me to come and travel to you. Um, most clients might come and, or might see me once a week, some see me twice a week. Um, so for that, um, it kind of really just depends on what you're doing for training. But let's say I, or you hire a trainer to come out to you once a week at $50 a week. Um, or $50 a session, four weeks a month, that's 200 bucks a month um, that you're going to be spending on a trainer. Um, again, these kind of things fluctuate too. Um, like I said, some of my clients see me once a week, some see me twice a week. I have some that see me three times a week. Um, you can also send your horse somewhere for training. Um, my starting price for that is $1,200 a month. So it kind of just depends what kind of training you need. Um, next up, we also have lessons. It's kind of the exact same thing as training. My rate's the same. You know, sometimes you might want to hire a trainer to help with the horse problem you can't handle, or you want to hire someone to give you lessons because you want to learn about something in particular. Maybe you want to learn to barrel race, whatever. Um, I'm also going to put $200 a month there. You know, let's say you hire an instructor um, once a week you know, for the month. Um, so then we have other things like a stall cleaner or an exercise or a horse sitting. You know, maybe you don't want to muck your stall, so you want to hire somebody to do it. Um, you know, that could be another expense as well. Um, try and find somebody, an exerciser, somebody to just come out and exercise your horse. You know, maybe you got injured or maybe you don't have the time to exercise your horse, so you're going to hire someone to do that as well. Horse sitting, let's say you want to go on vacation and you keep your horse in your backyard. Uh, for boarding, it's not really as big of a deal, um, but for horse sitting, you're going to want to hire someone to take care of your horse for however long you're going to be gone. So these are some other optional expenses uh, which you may have to be prepared for um, when owning a horse as well. Um, again, if you don't want a trainer or you don't want to take lessons or any of that stuff, you don't have to. Um, that's kind of just more of the optional side, but again, more expenses to just be prepared for. Now that we've covered monthly expenses and optional expenses, um, I have done the calculations uh, to bring up with you guys how much it costs per year um, to own a horse um, for boarding and backyard. This does not include all of the optional stuff along the bottom, uh, just the required stuff up top. Um, so if you board your horse, um, you can look to spend about $5,960 a year for one horse. Uh, for backyard, you can expect to spend about $3,800 a year, or again, just round that up to $4,000. Um, again, this does not include emergency vet bills, unexpected vet bills, um, or unexpected expenses either. A couple key points to remember. First off, the cheapest part of the horse is the horse itself. 
I come across people all the time who like, oh my god, this horse is super free, or this horse was only $125 from the BLM. And then before they know it, they realize that there's so much more to it. There's so much more financial side of it, um, physical side of it, the training side of it. And they just realize a bit off more than they can chew. So always remember that the cheapest part of the horse is the horse itself. Um, all that stuff doesn't even include tack, equipment, trailers. Um, none of that is included. That's literally just the basic care of the horse. So always remember too that there's always going to be more expenses down the road, whether you need to buy more equipment um, or a trailer to haul said horse, because I believe every horse owner should have a trailer. I also understand if you don't, I've been in that path, but there will always be more expenses that you should be prepared for. Another thing to keep in mind, things break. Horses break shit, um, equipment breaks, stuff breaks, right? So you might have really nice fencing and then before you know it, a horse destroys it. Um, or you have a really nice uh, bridle set up or something and then it gets destroyed just with time. So with that too, you always have to be prepared for stuff to break or having to replace certain things um, and stuff like that as well. One of the biggest expenses that you will ever have as a horse owner um, is emergency vet bills. Um, and I say this because it's true. You know, all of that stuff is just the bare minimum of horse care, how to provide for the financial side of it. But your biggest issue is going to be emergency vet care. Um, I've had times where I've had $10,000 in savings and a horse sticks its leg through a fence and before you know it, I just lost that $10,000 and then some. Uh, so emergency vet bills are always going to be the biggest thing and it's always why it's super important to have a good savings account um, in the event something like that happens. Because at the end of the day, shit happens, horses hurt themselves, um, and you can always be prepared uh, for those vet bills when they happen. Uh, from personal experience, I've learned that it's always cheaper to have your horse in a backyard compared to boarding it somewhere. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of pros and cons to both of them. So like, for example, with boarding, if you're a newer horse owner, it might be a smart option because if something happens, you always have somebody who knows more about horses around you, uh, which is nice. And on top of that too, you don't have to worry about fencing or shelter um, or having to find your own hay necessarily unless you're doing self-care. Um, and you kind of have a way to help guide you through that and some things that you don't necessarily have to worry about. You can also go on vacation sometimes and not necessarily have to worry about, oh, who's going to watch my horses and stuff like that. I um, mean, if you work a lot, boarding is a great option. Um, but as always, keeping it in your backyard, um, there's more to it as well. You know, you are the sole person taking care of your horse and if you work all the time, who's to say something doesn't happen while you're at work and no one's there to figure out about it, right? Um, so there's definitely pros and cons to both. Um, but it's typically cheaper to do backyard uh, than boarding somewhere. Another cost that I didn't quite factor into all of this was water. Um, typically at a boarding facility, one of the reasons that they charge boarding fee is to provide feed and water. Um, but I also know that different people do different things for water. Um, I live off grid, so I haul my own water and I have actually never had to pay an actual water bill. Uh, I probably spend about 200 bucks a month on water to run an entire training facility, but that's because we go pick up our own water, store our own water, and we have our own water system. But I also know that that is not the case, and due to my lack of knowledge for paying water bills and stuff like that, or like actual water bills, not just going to pick up my own water, uh, I did not include that just because I don't have a lot of experience on paying for water. Again, I, it's dirt cheap. I have about fucking 20 horses here a month and I spent like two to 300 bucks on water. So that's a cost I didn't include, but that's something you have to be prepared for as well. Another thing to be prepared for is you cannot just have one horse. Um, so if you're keeping your horse in your backyard, you can't just have one, you have to have two, which would make all of those expenses we just discussed, double them. Um, reasoning for this is horses are herd animals. They need to be around other horses for companionship. There's so many different things that could happen and could go wrong if your horse is alone and isolated all the time. This is another benefit of boarding because you can own one horse and the horse will constantly be surrounded by other horses. But keep that in mind as well, um, that if you keep your horse in your backyard, you cannot have just one, you need to have two, um, and the more the merrier. And finally, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, um, all of the costs that I just brought up to you guys are specific to my location. We are in Northern Arizona, um, and these are pretty common throughout the whole state of Arizona, but I know that like hay prices are a lot cheaper in other places or even more expensive in other places. Um, so depending on your location and your state and wherever you're at in the world, um, could also play a huge difference in how much it actually costs to own a horse per month, per year, etc. I'm a firm believer in being prepared uh, for a horse before you buy a horse, knowing how much it's going to be financially, what it's going to take physically, um, day to day stuff. Um, I always think it's good to be prepared, but I'm also a horse owner, so I know that you can prepare yourself as much as humanly possible and you're still going to learn the shit you don't know what to do with. If you have not already, please hit the red subscribe button. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, our podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts, um, as well as our online academy. There's a lot of great educational resources there uh, for horse owners from all over the world to go and learn about horses um, and expand their horsemanship knowledge. 
So definitely go and check that out. All of the links to all of that can be found on our website at wildchild.weebly.com. Again, the links to all of that can be found on our website at wildchild.weebly.com. I also highly recommend you check the description um, as we've got some fun stuff there too. We've got some links to stuff, sponsorship links, um, and all that fun stuff as well. And I will also be including a picture of the whiteboard uh, that we just wrote on uh, in this video as well. Um, so with that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic, amazing, wonderful rest of your day. Stay strong, stay true, stay wild, and see y'all next time.